Welcome to part 3 of my Alps trilogy, where we look at the Alps SKCL, SKCM series. Last week we looked at the genesis of the series, Green Alps, and in this video we looked how Alps evolved their design from there. The board we're going to take a look at this week is an Apple extended keyboard with orange Alps switches. I got this one out of a trade for a double shot cherry keyboard and although it came pre-converted to USB that didn't actually work properly. So I desoldered the converter and used Tom's trusty ADB converter that he made for me instead. I've already done a review of the AEK before so I'm not going to talk about the actual keyboard. For a review of the keyboard itself check out the link in the description below. Instead, I'll be talking pretty much only about the switches, and I'll compare the orange alps in this AEK to the salmon ones in my other AEK. But first, let's talk some history. I already mentioned last week how green alps were a modernization of alps' earlier SKCC switches, with a reduced height and room for an LED inside, both in response to market demand. However, those weren't the only innovations that were wanted. See, before the 80s, just about every single switch was linear, but typists were finding that tactile feedback was helping them out a lot. So Alps decided to expand the green Alps design so that it could provide tactility as well. Now, linear Alps switches already contained a small tactile bump in the key travel, as you can see from this force diagram of green Alps switches. This tactile event occurs when the slider clears the switch plate, like this. And because all the switches in the series have this switch plate, all switches, including SKCCs, have this tactile bump. Alps knew that this tactile bump existed in their switch, and when they wanted to design a tactile variant, they simply expanded on this phenomenon. So, to increase the tactility, they added a second fake switch plate, just a piece of plastic really, with another contact leaf on. The fake contact leaf in this particular switch appears to be completely identical to a normal contact leaf. It even still has the embossed dot in the middle of it where it normally presses against the switch blade, which shows how they directly use the contact leaf for the tactile mechanism. Most of the time these switches have a simpler version without this dot though, and it appears to be punched out of thicker steel for more tactility. In any case, the resulting tactile switch is what we now know as Brown Alps. Note that Alps put the dummy switch plate on the opposite side of the real switch plate. But this is where the LED would go on lock light switches, so it wasn't possible to have a tactile plate and an LED at the same time. So on tactile boards with integrated LEDs, they used linear switches instead of tactile ones, which was sometimes thought to be a manufacturing error. Which is why Matthias later redesigned their switches to be translucent so that you could shine light through them from the bottom without the need for an integrated LED. That way you could have both at the same time. And because they couldn't fit in an LED anyway, they also left out the LED cutout in the housing. Which is how you can easily separate linear ALP switches from non-linear ALP switches. Anyway, besides tactile feedback, in the early 80s, audible feedback was starting to get popular too. The earliest form was on linear keyboards that had a magnetic or electronic clicker like this in the case to make a bit of noise when the key was depressed, and a little bit like the clicker in the zenith that I showed last week. But IBM's beam spring and buckling spring design, among others, started to popularize mechanical clickers that were part of the switch mechanism itself because that was much simpler, cheaper, and more reliable. To achieve this, Alps decided to use the force from the slider to store and release energy to make a clicky noise. So, they replaced the fake switch plate and contact prongs with a single piece leaf spring that could be pulled forward as you press down the slider. And once pressed down far enough, it released slamming against the switch housing and generating a clicky noise. A simple, elegant design, 
and that's how Blue Alps came to me. Either simultaneously or several years later, Alps decided to make a tactile variant of this click leaf as well to replace the fake switchblade design. So they added two prongs at the top of the leaf that held the leaf spring in place so that it couldn't be pulled forward and make noise. As you can see, those prongs are not present on the clicky leaf and they called the resulting design Orange Alps and that's the ones in my keyboard. Then, after a while, rubber dome keyboards started to become more popular, and at the time, the biggest selling point wasn't actually cost, because although they were much cheaper to make, they weren't sold for prices that much lower than their mechanical counterparts. Instead, they pitched it on the lack of noise coming from the keyboards. So Alps included these little figure of eight shaped rubber dampers in their design. But unlike more conventional O-rings under the keycaps, such as the ones Cherry used, they put them in a little cutout in the slider here. This is a really elegant design and has two advantages over O-rings. First, it silences the up stroke as well as a down stroke, which results in a much quieter overall sound. And second, the damper doesn't extend past the slider. Instead, the housing rises up to meet it, which means that keystroke length is shortened by the smallest possible amount. And this design is what we now know as cream dampened Alps. So, after the zeroth generation SKCC switch, there came the first generation of SKCL and SKCM switches that I just talked about. These were followed up by some slightly redesigned versions in the second generation of switches, which ditched the lubricant that came with earlier switches until SKCM cream damped, and which appear to have used a different slipperier plastic to compensate, possibly polyoxymethylene, as well as slightly different springs, leaves, etc. And then afterwards, of course, came a huge amount of clones, as well as a whole bunch of switches that were directly inspired by the Alps design. Later, when Alps decided to stop making these switches themselves, Forward Electronics produced much more simplified designs of these under license. And when they went under, Matthias started producing copies of these switches with some modernizations and upgrades, including that transparent housing and more durable contacts, but otherwise they're the same design. Note that this timeline isn't 100% certain by the way, a few rare and obscure switch types have been left out because we simply don't have conclusive evidence of from when to when these switches were made. For example, it's entirely possible that Tactile Cream Alps preceded Orange Alps, that Amber Alps preceded Blue Alps, and that Tactile Green Alps were a successor of Brown Alps, but right now we just don't know any of this for sure. Generally speaking, the quality of these switches went down over time. For example, Blue Alps are widely considered to be superior to White Alps, which in turn are considered to be better than the simplified version. These Orange Alps were succeeded by Salmon Alps, and then by Black Alps. And although Salmons are widely considered superior to Black Alps, there are divided opinions about whether Orange is better than Salmon. Some say oranges are definitely better than salmons, and others say they're exactly the same. This discrepancy is almost certainly the result of using either different keyboards or having switches in different conditions. Well, I've got two AEKs here, one with salmon alps and one with orange alps, so hopefully we can settle this debate for once and for all. First, the easiest to distinguish, the sound. There is definitely a difference here. It's the same kind of sound, but the orange switches definitely sound deeper, as well as a little less loud than the salmons by about three decibels. Here, I'll give you a quick demo. The oranges do ping more though, but the camera doesn't really pick this up very well. As for the key feel, it's almost identical. Really, they feel almost exactly the same. The only difference is the weighting. Salmon Alps have the standard Alps weighting of 65 to 70 grams, while the oranges have a weighting between 55 and 60 grams of force, which I've confirmed myself with some weights and an analytical lab balance. As for which of the two I prefer, frankly, they're both outstanding switches. I type at different speeds depending on the switches I use, and both Salmon and Orange Alps have always been one of my fastest typing switches. I can hugely recommend both of them. 
Which of the two weightings you'll like more obviously depends on your preference. I myself like both of them, and would happily type on either any day though. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, as well as the trilogy as a whole. Following is a typing demonstration of me typing on the Orange Alps AEK.